Hey, New Life, welcome to our podcast, and we've been doing this every week to talk about the sermon that we had on the prior Sunday. So today, I'm really excited to be with Pastor Don, who you all know very well, Pastor hey. Jeff, who you know very well, and Derek, who you might not know very well. So Derek is here, and Derek is an amazing guy who's been attending uh, church here for a little while, mm -hmm. and he has been meeting with me and helping me with research, conversations about the text passage on the back end of it. So if you've seen any improvement in the sermons over the past several months, <laughs> you might have to thank Derek for that. <laughs> uh, well, it's also important to mention that Derek, being an attorney, he has a legal mind. Yes. So there, there are details and technicalities that he's going to think about that perhaps I would not. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been super helpful. Yeah, I've yeah, enjoyed it. Too. It's been great conversation. And mm -hmm. Um, he has a resume a mile long, mm -hmm. uh, so it's been it's been fun. So we're talking about the Imago Day mm -hmm. today, and yeah. just for the next ten to fifteen minutes, let's talk about what that means, the effect that it has on our lives, and even on our culture and how we relate mm -hmm. to culture. So let me just throw it out there immediately for everybody. But mm -hmm. when you hear of the Imago Day, based on either some of the stuff from the sermon on Sunday or mm -hmm. stuff you've known previous. Um, why is it significant that we are made in the image of God? Why is that a big deal? Well, one of the things that's significant to me is that we live in a utilitarian society. What I mean by that is uh, I look at people and I say that that person's important because of what they've accomplished. Mm. Well, God has a different perspective. Accomplishments are important. They're significant, no question about it. But when my distinction is based on the fact that I'm created in the image of God, not based on my accomplishments, just the fact that I am of great value because I am created in his image. Of course, it reminded me, of, of course, of, of the words of C.S. Lewis, which, you know, you've never met a mere person, hmm. just a, a mere human being. Every person you will ever meet. In fact, one way of looking at it, every person, whether they are a drunkard who are, they're laid out in the gutter or they are a, an elected official, they are created in the image of God and they are of great value hmm. for that alone. In yeah. spite of their successes or failures, just that alone. I love that. And this was just two days ago was Martin Luther King mm -hmm. uh, Jr. celebration. Yes. And we talked a little bit about that on Sunday, but mm -hmm. just what this, the effect this has on race relations yes. and the value of individuals. Yes. So, um, yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, uh, I mean, Don said it well, just reminds us of, uh, reminds me of looking at the value of another person. Uh, based on not themselves, but on actually on their creator. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and for myself too, as sometimes we're just hard on on ourselves personally because, like, well, I'm I'm no good. I'm not I'm not worth anything. No, we're we're made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we need to see every other person as opposed to, like yes. Don explained, the utilitarian view is that their value comes from their creator. And Troy, mm -hmm. I know you did a, a great job uh, talking about that Sunday, yeah. and I really appreciated that point. So, yeah, I left with uh, four applications, two that you had mentioned. One is, I'm in the image of... No, up close. Mm -hmm. there you go. I, I'm in Just the image tip. of God, less about what does that mean to me, but what is God? What are his attributes? What attributes do I have? Because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that people misunderstand is I'm not God-like. Mm -hmm. I have some God's attributes, but I'm no, I'm not a mini God. Mm -hmm. um, and then quickly, the second thing is Jesus is the perfect image of God, mm -hmm. and we're called to reflect on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's an, another great meditation that can take you pretty deep. Mm -hmm. And then the second is more horizontal, looking at other people mm -hmm. um, and seeing them in the image of God. A lot. Of, I live downtown, so I see a lot of homeless people, mm -hmm. and I always pray for them. I don't, I don't necessarily know how to help, but this week I've actually, before I pray... I think of them as the image of God. Yeah. So maybe it's not, it's a different, I wouldn't say it was a condescending prayer before, but now it's like, you know, this person's very special. Pray for them as a special person. Mm -hmm. And then the last is what, we'll talk more about it, but what is the distortion in myself? Am I, you know, what's, am I the mirror? Am I reflecting the attributes of God, the mm -hmm. attributes of Jesus? Can these people even see that I am mm -hmm. the image of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a kind of a noun part to the definition mm -hmm. of it that is, like, like we are mm -hmm. the image of God. Like that's like it's who we are. And yeah. then there's a part of it that says this is 
what what we do. We mm-hmm. reflect we reflect mm-hmm. him. And um, that the mirror and the verb. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. both. Mm-hmm. And and that's the way it was. I love the fact that you brought up that okay, we're not mini gods. We're not equal in any way mm-hmm. to who God is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then in the garden, it was disrupted. Mm-hmm. Um, it was changed. It's disfigured. And, and that's really the reason why the chaos in our world exists yeah. of sin. Yeah. And Martin Luther King Jr. had a lot of great quotes about sin being the reason behind mm-hmm. the chaos that we see in our world. Yeah. 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 I love that. I, um, sometimes I think we get accustomed to the word sin and we mm-hmm. just think, oh, just sin in general. And uh, you use the quote by uh, by MLK that I thought was great. And he described it as a gone wrongness. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, all of us can feel mm-hmm. that and know that and have experienced our gone wrongness. And so how is it we need to adjust that and then how, how is it that we see other people in their gone wrongness? Do we see them as lesser, or do we see them still as in the image of God? There is um, a story that I have heard going back for decades, and I, I need to confirm this. But the story goes like this, that Dr. King was leading a march in one of the southern cities, it might have been Birmingham, Alabama, and a little white girl walks up to him and calls him the N-word and tells him that she hates him and continues, she says it several times, calling him the N-word. And Martin Luther King Jr. leans down to her and says to her, you are too pretty to hate. Mm -hmm. I would argue that that is a correct response to the image of God, rather than call her names mm-hmm. or denigrate her as she had denigrated him, he, even in the midst of being insulted by a child, still recognizes the image of God. Mm. See, part of what you just said, Derek, has to do with the fact that I am responsible to recognize the image of God in you, whether you behave properly or not. Now, th- 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 there's no question that the image of God has been marred by virtue of bad behavior it began in the garden. Mm-hmm. And that principle still is carried out. But at the same time, as I relate to other human beings, my job is to recognize the image of God in that person. And at the same time, as I also recognize the poor behavior, see what I what is a redemptive response? Mm-hmm. And that Dr. King's response to that little white girl is a redemptive response. Mm. You're too pretty to hate. But naturally, we go an eye for an eye. Exactly. You know, so I, I feel this and I come back. Exactly. And I think his quote that says, an eye for an eye makes us both blind. Yeah. Is right. Yeah, you're right. And, and that brings us to, I think, Derek and where we, we were talking is like, so what's the fix? Mm-hmm. You know, how do we go through? And that's where Jesus yeah. is the perfect image of God. And that's where the story of redemption and the gospel comes in, which says, the failures are massive, and the only way to come back and be mm. reconciled to God is through that relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And and then we can mm-hmm. live out this image of God as image bearers, mm-hmm. and it affects really, you know, multiple things, but it affects human dignity. Yeah. You know, why do we have value, as we've all touched on? Mm-hmm. Because we're made in the image of God, and that's where mm-hmm. the value comes from. And human rights mm-hmm. come out of come out of that. So we have these God-given rights yeah. because we have God-given value. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, yeah, these are significant things. And the world in which we live, we feel it, don't we? Yeah. But we're guilty of it. And yeah. I, I think that was the point for me, too, even in studying this out, is like, yeah, it's easy to stand up and say, this country, these people, they're wrong, and just mm-hmm. start, you know, throwing stuff over the wall. And I really should be in a situation where it's like, no, how do I view that homeless person or how do I view that person that might be from a background way different than mine and I don't like their world view? How do I view that Mm -hmm. person in the image of God and see their value? Mm -hmm. Along with that, just looking at the genius of the teachings of Jesus when he says to forgive your enemies 
and do good to those who despitefully use you. Um, Paul compliments this by saying that don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, why this is so ingenious is this. Hatred destroys the hater. Hmm. Vengeance destroys the one seeking revenge. And, and you, you see this. You, you, I've seen it. You see this. It doesn't mean that, that uh, we never expect people to correct their behavior. It doesn't mean that we don't hold people accountable. On the contrary, it means that if, if someone is using me in a despiteful way, I don't retaliate, as we've said earlier, with an eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth. One of the reasons why is because we end up multiplying like rabbits and we, you know, more and more people hate one another. But at the same time, also, if I can truly look at a person who's hateful towards me and if I can maintain my demeanor and, and by God's grace, uh, not hate them in return, I don't self-destruct mm -hmm. because hating and evil destroys the sinner. I, I, there are three things, that, there are three problems with sin. One, um, sin destroys our relationship with God. And because we are unfortunately accustomed to not having a relationship with God, it doesn't mean as much as it should. But sin destroys our relationship with God. Bad behavior. Two, sin destroys the sinner. And three, sin destroys those who are within uh, the sphere of the sinner. So there's three things that happens when a person sins. Their relationship with God, their relationship with themselves, and their relationship with others. Hmm. And if we can stop that cycle by I'm not going to retaliate, um, doesn't mean I ignore the problem, doesn't mean I don't hold the person accountable, but I'm not going to uh, render evil for evil or hatred for hatred. That's why it's such an ingenious concept when Jesus says, uh, love your enemies. Hmm. If for no other reason, it preserves you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bring up a great point because I think when we lose sight of our image-bearing status, mm -hmm. we really get hurt. Yeah. And there's a lot of pain in the world today yeah. because we're missing out on our purpose of, mm -hmm. of why we're here and then also the opportunity we have for redemption. So true. Yeah. So true. Spark, any thoughts on you guys? Deep in thought? Well, it's, it's interesting. I would say the number three problem with the church is that we don't love our neighbors as ourselves, particularly mm. the Samaritans. And the Samaritans would have been unclean. They would have been a different race, certainly a different ethnicity in their minds, right? Mm -hmm. and to the point where in the Good Samaritan, the priest w crosses the street to do that. And I think we, the church, has divisions. I think we're rather unified in ex ex expelling mm -hmm. certain sins, mm -hmm. um, whether it's drug addiction, sexual immorality, um, alcoholism, and we don't touch on the sins of gluttony. Mm -hmm. We don't touch on the sin of pride. We don't touch on the sin of materialism. Mm -hmm. But all those, sin, all those sins are the same. Mm. But he asked, which is the greatest commandment? And the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Mm. And so if you really want to rank order sins, which people try and do, get in there into besetting sins or repeating sins, you know, the elevated sin is not loving your neighbor as yourself. It's not an aspiration. It's God's command. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can dig in right here and just pick on the church a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I think, uh, and I'm a, huge, a very firm believer in life and life issues. But, man, that's an easy one for the church to pick on people outside of the church mm -hmm. and to, like, dig in and say, you know, abortion is wrong. And it is. Mm -hmm. um, however, at the very same time, it's a little more difficult for us to look in the mirror at gluttony, pride, selfishness, you know, a plethora of other of other sins that come out. And, and we're hurting ourselves as a church by not doing that because... We're not receiving forgiveness for these sins, and we're just looking out. And so it's like the beam in, in our eye and, and the moat sometimes in somebody else's eye. And so, um, I, and I think a lot of the damage, this isn't a, not beating up the church. The church is, you know, includes me, includes everyone in this room, right? So I'm not I'm cap talking capital C church or little mm. C church. We should talk both. I agree, man. I Just can, kidding. I mean, that's an inside joke, Derek. I know. I, and I can give you number one and two problem with the church as well. Um, but I think the damage has been done. There's been deep wounds with people. If you go to certain groups and you tell them you go to church, it immediately goes to, you judge me, I'm a sinner, I'm going to hell. Mm. 
How can we change uh, that? Oh, go ahead. Well, I'm um, respond to that and also answer the, your question at the same time. I was approached a number of years ago by a couple in my church. Uh, they had sustained a, a, a death in the family, and they wanted to know if I would funeralize this person. This person who had died was not a member of the church, and um, oh, I, I, oh my God, and they needed someone to funeralize. And I said, oh, of course, whatever I can do. And um, they talked about the fact that a date had been scheduled and what have you, and would I be available? Okay. And they said, we need to tell you something, Pastor Don. I said, what's that? They said, that she was a part of the uh, gay community. She was lesbian. I said, okay. And they said, are you still willing to do it? I said, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, she passed away. And and you as a family, you're grieving. Uh, what, what can I do? And so uh, I prepared and then they said there's going to be a lot of homosexuals and lesbians at this uh, service, okay? And, um, and there were. And I remember just prior to uh, walking out to the um, gravesite uh, that uh, there were some people in the kitchen talking back and forth. I didn't know any of them. And someone said, uh, referencing me, does he know? And I knew what they meant. Does he know that person was a lesbian that he's going to funeralize? Does he know? Um, they weren't talking to me, and they didn't know I overheard them. But they, uh, I could have, yes, I know. <laughs> and um, by the way, I would have said, I don't know if you realize it, I'm not God. <laughs> I'm not God. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but for the grace of God, you know, there go I. So I'm, I'm not here to pass judgment or condemnation, uh, I am here to demonstrate the love of Christ. And I'm very emphatic about that. And there would be those who would argue and say, well, man, are you a person of, do you have standards? Of course I have standards. And part of my standard is love and caring, mm -hmm. compassion. And, and I say that in the light of this. And pardon me for bouncing around a little bit. I was sitting listening to a pastor years ago. It's, this has, it's probably around 40 some odd years ago. He gets up in the Sunday morning prime time and he says, literally, I quote, I hate gays. And the place got quiet. And he didn't realize, he might as well have said, I had me on a woman last night. I found a prostitute. I had great sex last night. He, doesn't, he didn't realize. He, in essence, has said the same thing. I hate gays. You're saying you hate people. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I, I hate sin. He said, I hate gays. I would argue that there is a percentage of Christianity today that feels very comfortable hating I would argue, I've even read of pastors who literally had agreed to perform funerals and then discovered the person was from the gay community and literally said, I am not doing this funeral and left the family in a lurch. As if somehow by doing the funeral, you are endorsing the choices the person made. I don't understand that. That's interesting. Uh, for a... A pastor to say something like that mm -hmm. to me feels like it would disqualify them from being a pastor. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It feels like that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we, we have enough problems. <laughs> yes. We got enough problems trying yeah. to meet the community and, and win the lost. Mm -hmm. My God. Wow. Yeah, I think that's the key is, you know, how do we fix it? Um, you know, we're living in a, what some people would say, a post Christian world. You don't mm -hmm. have generational people coming into church. Mm -hmm. particularly in the urban environment. You know, people are moving away. In the KC, they're moving away mm -hmm. from their, their homes, their villages, you know, not villages, their small towns where their church mm -hmm. was a big piece of the community. And they're leaving that, and they're starting over from the city, and, and church isn't a piece of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so more than ever, they're going to rely on the salt and light. Now, going forward with someone's sin is not the opening move for building a relationship and mm -hmm. the gospel. Um, by the way, Keller has a fantastic six-minute talk on... Mm -hmm. um, Keller on homosexuality at Columbia, mm -hmm. speaking to it, changed my life, not on that particular subject, but on the, the subject of engaging um, the community. And one, he says, get people to the point where they wish Christianity was true or they need Christianity was true and then That's show powerful. them it's true. That's powerful. I don't need Christianity because I'm a sinner. 
You know, frankly, at, at the repentance point, when I realize I'm a sinner and I need Jesus, I don't really understand the depth of my sin. Mm -hmm. That's sanctification over time. There's, but what is that point where I need a savior? Where am I, where am I broken? Am yeah. I in a hole? Am I wrestling with God? Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, the, the log in your eye. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. going to bring people to Jesus. Yeah. Back to the Imago Day, we're shining our lights, mm -hmm. and we're not shining much of a light um, if we're merely reflecting God's wrath. Um, and like you said, you know, it's vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't need me to mirror His wrath. Yeah. Know, he's got, I got that, Derek. I got, I got that part. <laughs> you go and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think to, in a lot of this, and part of your sermon tour on Sunday was uh, the image of God is and is a critical uh, uh, part of what we have to realize and grow. Mm -hmm. But we can't do that until our heart is changed and transformed by Jesus Christ. Wow. Yes. Uh, so we can go have all the talks with the other side of the fence on whatever issue we're talking about and say, we need change, we need to do better, we need to behave better. Um, but even this pastor that would yeah. say that, he, he needs to be transformed by Jesus Christ, uh, just like each one of us does yes. personally. And so in order to, uh, to fully understand, and um, I think your, your point or Keller's point was to represent and reflect the glory of God only comes yeah. from our transformation by yeah. Jesus. Hmm. We're called to witness. And mm -hmm. as the lawyer, I'm glad you introduced that. I'm a New York lawyer, by the way. I'm not practicing licensed in Missouri or Kansas. Um, but we, we are called to be witnesses. Well, the definition of witness is someone who's seen something. If you call, if I called you to court and you hadn't seen anything, I'd be like, I dismissed this witness. Mm -hmm. They're not a witness. So if you haven't seen anything, you haven't been impacted by the gospel, you have nothing to share. Yeah. Let me add to your definition. It is. There's an interesting twist to that in the Greek word in the New Testament, the word is pronounced martus. You shall be witnesses unto me. It's martus, M-A-R-T-U-S. It is where we get our English word, martyr. You put the context and the definition together, you have one who testifies of what he's seen and heard with the attitude of a martyr. I thought about that. This is my first podcast, and <laughs> we have the luxury of sitting around talking about these topics. Some yeah. of them are controversial, you know, um, but to sit around and do a podcast like this in China, you would 100% be in jail. Um, to sit around and do this in some other countries would be persecution, torture, no and question. execution. No question. And frankly, you know, the persecution of the churches is as much as ever. So, um, you know, thank God for the ability to spread this and, mm -hmm. and speak to the people that are watching this. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to go back to a witness as a martyr, we, yeah. we are in luxury compared to most Christians around the world in other countries. It's true. Man, that's a great point. It is. I, I just want to say one last thing, and if you all mm -hmm. have your last statement or whatever, we're going to say we got to wrap this thing up. But, man, I was just thinking of uh, the, the biblical ethic we have mm. because we believe in the image of God that gives us foundation to view people as equal. Yeah. Those who don't believe in the image of God really have nothing firm to stand on yeah. that allows them to value someone that's different than them mm -hmm. equally. And I think that's significant from a Christian perspective, because if you look at the chaos around us and you're like, I don't want to see that chaos, then the path forward is through Jesus, who's the perfect image of God, logically, that's the only way forward. It's powerful. I think that, you know, reflecting God is, is fantastic to the extent we're salt and light, but unless you articulate the gospel, mm -hmm. the gospel is not heard. It has mm. to be articulated. And so, I mean, you need to make clear that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He came to earth fully God, fully man, died for our sins. On the third day was rose again, was witnessed, ascended to God, to the right hand of God, and is God and is our interceder. And if you... You need to be witness, you need to be light, but you need to explain where that witness and light is coming from. People yeah. aren't just going to see a good person and, and understand the gospel. And, and it's so much deeper than just saying, oh, Jesus was a great man. He lived. He had leadership principles from 2,000 years ago. And we actually believe God took on flesh wow. and physically, mm -hmm. bodily resurrected from the dead. That's like a big step. 
but, yeah. but that's it. That's yeah. a good place to start. I don't know how many people would even say Jesus is a good teacher because they don't even know the teachings of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a perfect place to start. Jesus is a good teacher. Yeah. Agreed. Let's read what, some of what Jesus said. Let's start in the mm -hmm. wisdom. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Good. Okay, well, I'll say one last thing real okay. quick. Is lo Close us out. Love the, the, the fact that the image of God, this is going to shock you guys, that the image of God points to community. Hmm. And, yes, it and, does. And uh, uh, MLK, I used a, a reference for him. I don't know if it was a quote, but, uh, you know, it points toward uh, loving God first and loving others. Yeah. And and uh, so that we want to do that here at New Life. That's why... We don't just have small groups. We call them connect groups because we want to connect to God and to mm -hmm. one another. We don't just do it because it's some fun program. Mm -hmm. We want to reflect the image of God and love one another by by being in life together. And so, mm -hmm. by the way, this will surprise you guys too, is we have connect groups starting up soon. So let us know if you're interested in those. <laughs> How about that. that, huh? Man, questions, info at newlifekc.org. Uh, you can shoot us a, a quick email and we Please. would love to connect more if you have biblical questions you want to talk through some of this stuff uh, if you have social questions you can talk to Pastor Don he has great advice on that stuff I love it so man legal questions can no we better not do that <laughs> fun fact you could put this after the credits not part of the podcast however when I've been helping Troy prepare for sermons generally he's got the exposition of the Bible he's got that memorized in uh but I like to go and look at Spurgeon and, and Keller and, and Greg Laurie and, and just whoever I can get my hands on. And I usually write up a few notes. It's very, very good. And it leads to some fantastic conversations. But this time, when I did my Google search and got Keller Image of God, I watched it and I just sent to him. I was like, I don't have anything more to add to this. <laughs> and he mentioned that on, on the sermon. I'm like, I literally just watched this. There's, I can't add anything to this. The funny thing, though, is in the sermon, this must have been a few years ago, he said there's a book coming out and he referenced this book and yeah. it wasn't out yet. And when I, after I sent Troy the video, he went and got the library and just sent me a picture of this. So that was, cool. that was cool. And yeah. cool to think of that sermon having such impact. It's just so mm -hmm. perfect. You know? Yeah. Really good. And it was Martin Luther King weekend. Mm. I, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys.